Hello and welcome to the First Issue Club Podcast. We are your weekly comic book podcast where we cover first issues, number ones only, each and every week, and we read them together with you. In the club today, we have Mike D. That's me. We have Greg. Hi. And we have me, Budget King. And this week, this week, this week is New Writer Showcase. Oh, really? Mm. We got two new books by two fresh new writers. Fresh to us? They ha- they you know what they have in common? They each have one other book uh, that is like popularly known. Okay. Probably. They would if they were here, they'd be telling you they have more. Right. But as as intros to this podcast, I'm going to call this the New Writer <laughs> Showcase. But, but now they're dipping their toes into a bigger pond, <laughs> yes. you might say. Yeah. Our podcast is uh, the pond they're dipping. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and Congratulations, it is guys. And, deep. <laughs> and uh, for that, for the New Writer Showcase, we have Stray Dogs out on Image and By the Horns by out on Scout. So uh, s- stick around for those because those are going to be fabuloso. <laughs> <laughs> we never tell people to stick around for the reviews. We should, you know. Oh, I think that's kind of why they're here. It, it is. It is. You're right. But, uh, you know, it, you got to say it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we know you come here for the news, but stick around because we actually talk about comic book yeah, shit. Yeah, because it's like actually comic book shit. Um, okay. And then, so we got lots of news today. Um, Department of Truth. Today, One of my favorite comics right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, is got option for a TV show. Well deserved. Anyone surprised? I am not surprised because of the hype. I am surprised of like the craziness of it. It seems like it will be a hard TV show to follow. Well, if you watch the news for 10 minutes, you can kind of see it's already playing out in real life anyway <laughs> with all these weird conspiracy groups that we deal with and that stormed the Capitol a few months ago. Yeah. I think people are going to eat it up. I yeah. think they will love I, it. What we would talked about how crazy it was that someone was writing something so relevant to some of the news we were hearing so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think even after this is through TV production and the season starts, people are still going to be like, wow, I can't believe how quick they made a TV show about this shit. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's (laughs) about how crazy people are. Yep. Um, I read somewhere that the producers of it want to keep it as true to the comics that they've read thus far as possible. Which, wowee. (laughs) It's, I mean, it's an intense comic. Obviously, the art style is wild, but I think it'll translate really well to a thriller. What I was thinking is there's not a clear hero protagonist, and sometimes that's hard for a show to follow. Like, I've heard that... Our new agent is definitely going to be, like, the star. Yes, Yeah. yeah. But, like, the new agent is, you know... It's complex. Like, you don't really know if they're a good person or not. Or, like, and they kind of question that a little bit. That's, yeah, his arc's been really interesting because he we thought he's been, he's been on Lee Harvey Oswald's side yeah. this entire time. And now he's starting to have doubts, which is the good side, which if, is the bad if, side. If you haven't read Department of Truth at all, we're talking nonsense right now. Right, exactly. With the, with the things that we're mentioning, so... <laughs> Trust us, it's a great comic book. You need to get on. Oh yeah, it's truth. it's wonderful. It's so, it, and it's like the trades either coming out soon or just came out. It just came out. Yeah, so volume one just came out. One through and six. Image volume ones are really cheap. So like ten bucks. Yeah, grab it. Totally worth it. Oh yeah, and the art's awesome. The um, King in Black is being delayed. Because one standalone comic isn't going to get in in time. Well, that's the problem with these like events, right? That one misses its target, and then every there's so many books tied into the event and the Venom series as a whole. Mm-hmm. It's building up to a huge milestone comic. That one peg falls out of place, and you got to push everything for spoilers. That's the toughest thing about big two comics yeah. and the release schedule. Like, they're huge. If you watched any of the, like, Marvel 616 documentaries on Disney+, Plus, there's a great one with Dan Slott where they're like, you have to finish this book. <laughs> if you don't stay on this schedule, like, we're screwed. And they're, like, coloring it with, like, and lettering it with, you know, hours left to mm-hmm. get it to print. My, my question is, uh, what has this creative team been doing for the last year? 
<laughs> because this book that they've been working on that is now delayed was supposed to come out probably about six to seven months that's ago. A, that's a great fucking point. That yeah, is a really know. good point. So I don't know if they went into some weird kind of depression hibernation <laughs> and just didn't work on anything. It but... must be a bigger book because they don't. Well, no, I guess they're all tied into each other. It doesn't matter which one delays. Regardless, this shouldn't have happened. I want to stress, though, that we know the demands of creating comic books is extremely high. Sure. A lot of the artists are, like, so overworked. Mm -hmm. And it takes so long to make just one comic book. Yeah. What's their schedule? Like, a page a day? I think so. So you think about, like, that. It takes a month. Just to do one Marvel comic, Mm -hmm. one issue. And is that the only thing that person's doing to keep themselves alive (laughs) and (laughs) and support their family is one Marvel comic? No, they do multiple of them. Yeah. So the the fact that they can keep up with that is mind blowing to me. Mm -hmm. The heat heat is on. Uh, So new Spider Man movie has a name now. Yep, the the day before, the three stars of it, Tom Holland, Zendaya, and then uh, the other uh, kid in there, they all teased, like, some fake Spider-Man names, like Homesick or Home Slice or silly stuff like that. People went absolutely batshit crazy, and then they found out it was a joke, and then the next day they released what the real name of the movie is, is Spider-Man Can't Go Home, or something like that. No Road Home or something, yeah. Sure. (laughs) Can't Go Home. I love that our news is like, it was something like that. <laughs> Home is where the heart is. First issue I don't know. Club, reporting the like vague idea of something we heard. <laughs> There's the word home in it. <laughs> we intrigue you enough for you to go check it out for yourself. <laughs> so These three idiots are giving me kind of the news. <laughs> There's the Spider-Man movie. <laughs> well, we, we can't confirm that. We know that this is somehow wrapped up in... Multiverse of Madness and ties into Doctor Strange, correct? So yes. that's what I like. Yeah. So he's stuck in another another dimension. We assume. Oh, no one followed up by saying another dimension. Again. <laughs> oh, another dimension. I, I thought that was a layup for me, a Beastie Boys joke. <laughs> another dimension. Um, there was a so there's going to be Spider Verse shit that happens in this one too, which will be interesting to see mm-hmm. that in live action. Yep. And Tom Holland has now come out and said that uh, the other two Spider Mans from the other two Spider Man movies, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire mm-hmm. aren't in the movie. Um, people are still holding out hope that they do make an appearance. I'm not holding my breath, or do I even really care? Yeah. Because uh, when this movie was just going into production, it seemed a little bloated with things that were going to be in this movie, as far as characters and villains. I think they need to step it up a notch, though. So I'm excited for them to wow me. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be huge. When I heard, read the concept of Spider Verse on paper and thought that they were going to make a heard they were going to make a movie out of that. Mm-hmm. I thought no way this movie works, and it was fucking great. So the animated one, yeah, okay, yeah. Is there another one? I'm just saying this is <laughs> real life and trying to get all those people into one scene and to make it look halfway decent is probably a lot harder in my mind than an animated movie. I think it'll probably just be like quick and fun if they do it. If they do it, I hope it is like that. Just quick little blips in and out of mm-hmm. universes. Yeah. And final news, do you care that Daft Punk broke up? They had a good run. How long have they been together? 28 years. That's fine. That's longer than most marriages. Okay. I'm bummed. I'm a huge Daft Punk fan. So am I. And they, <laughs> I've known them as like long as I've been a fan of music. I remember watching... Late at night, 1995, around the world. That video is oh, nuts. Oh, dude, yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, amazing. I loved the- it's Michelle anim- Gondry. The anime movie they did. Yeah, mm-hmm. you and I watched Interstella it. Interstellar 555 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Is, was my entry point into, like, anime, period. Oh, that's I didn't, so good. I didn't know that that was, like, a whole world or genre that existed. Now it's, like, super famous, mm-hmm. but at the time- there wasn't that much exposure in America to it unless you were a Daft Punk fan. Yeah. And we're like, what's this weird ass <laughs> thing that they're doing? <laughs> These cartoons look different. I did at all the Reddit chains are like, I didn't get to see them. And it was like, well, I did see them on the Discovery Tour. So I feel like I did that. Yeah. But I'm kind of like, it's sad that they're not going to make music. I don't really give a shit that you didn't get to see them. I could care less about seeing DJs 
who you don't even tour. can't even confirm if it's them because they're wearing masks. Right. And they might as well be pushing play on a CD. Yeah. They're not like yeah. shredding the drums. No. <laughs> the show was was very, very fun. One of the best shows I've ever I'm been I'm sure to. it's like yeah. a party, right? Yeah. But, but in general, like I'm like, uh, Random Access, Mem- Access Memory was an amazing fantastic album. Fantastic album. And it's like so many cool features, so many ways to level themselves up with like Pharrell and... Um, Animal Collective and all that kind of stuff. If that was the trajectory for their career to like do more of that in the future, what a bummer that they're not. Yeah. They're they're evolving just like we all should. They're fifty. I mean, so I don't know. I plan on working when I'm fifty, but they're done. They, you you kind of have to in this economy. <laughs> even robots' metabolism slow down. Yeah. At some point, their their casings don't fit anymore, and they've just got to. They're squeakier than twenty years ago. Hit the power button and shut down. Turn yourself off. Turn yourself back on again. Let's get this podcast started. One zero one one zero one. Your hold on. First up, we have Stray Dogs by Image Comic Books. This was the comic book that had a cover that looked like Science of the Lambs or looked like All Dogs Go to Heaven. Choose. Take your pick. Choose your fighter. <laughs> uh, Tony Felices and Trish Forstner are the tag team duo that do My Little Pony. And uh, Tony's a humble guy. He in his his uh, in the end of his notes, he says, "You probably don't know me." And Tony, we didn't know you uh, beforehand. Uh, we weren't reading, reading My Little Pony, but uh, we're glad we know you today, and we're glad we know Trish because you wrote a fun ass crazy dog story called Stray Dogs. Does anybody want to try to like give it an elevator little uh, pitch and what it is? Stray Dogs. It is like. Memento with dogs, in a sense. They've got... (laughs) Dogs have such a short memory Mm -hmm. that they don't remember that their owner killed their old owners and kidnapped them all. Yes. And the newest dog has enough recollection that she gets splashes of it and starts to key in the other dogs on, like, wait. Did all of our old owners get murdered? <laughs> Are we in like a murderer's house and we just thought we loved this guy who's been our owner this whole time? It was creepy, super creepy, way creepier than uh, a, do- a a comic book that looks like like uh, what's that um comic book the Billy Joel? Uh, looks like Oliver and Company. Uh, yeah, it looks like Oliver and Company. <laughs> um, it was way creepier and like basically like it it was written so well like a like a horror movie and you're like going through the house and basically when they're introducing this new dog who she doesn't know is now living in a murderer's house they're like oh master doesn't let us go in there master makes us all sleep in his room at night and like that scene when they all have to sleep in the room of the master at night i was like Oh dear God! This took a turn, <laughs> <laughs> but nothing even like really sinister happened. They just all went to bed, but he's just surrounded was, by animals that he's killed. Just creepy as fuck, though. Like, I think there's that weird, just underlying thing of we, as the reader, know that's a serial killer, and his trophies are these dogs from yes. the previous victims. It's such a good concept. I, I think where this book had me was it was like it was like. Homeward Bound, but then it was also <laughs> Silence of the Lambs or like, it, like a crazy horror movie. So it, like the fact that it meshed those genres together, like I'm not gonna read a book that's like straight up Homeward Bound. I like dogs. You like dogs, Greg, a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Hold but... on, you need to, you need to clarify that because <laughs> when you said you like dogs a lot, you you implied I don't think intentionally a romantic angle. You're the only non-dog owner in the uh, in the club right now, but uh, you uh, you used to rescue dogs that you felt like were not being taken care of, and yes. you would uh, rescue them illegally. 
Yes. That's how much your heart loved yeah. uh, dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, so as dog lovers, all three of us, I think a dog book would not be enough for us to read a comic book. A dog book where you throw in serial killers and make it really weird and fucked up. Now that's enough for me. The, this, this book definitely needed a different hook than cutesy Disney looking animals that talk insanely 90s Disney like it's crazy how much they nailed it what did it, you think about the art style I like so the, he the artist actually went into it that they actually studied under the director who did Five Goes West so the they have an animation background in this kind of particular style and I mean if you want to get really into it there's that juxtaposition of this is cutesy animated kids looking television show style with a very dark undertone of murder and mystery. Which I assume was purposeful. Oh, yeah, for sure. definitely. And it makes it, when it becomes horror, like so much more unexpected and weird. Because mm-hmm. it just is like, wait, that doesn't fit here. I thought I was reading a book for eight-year-olds. I can't wait for the issue where they kill the serial killer. I hope it goes batshit crazy. Because these dogs can't write a note to the police. <laughs> saying bow wow we know where the guy is that's killing all these missing people correct so they got it's in their paws now they have to take control of the situation i'm glad you said paws instead of hands does it remind you guys at all beast of burden uh, okay no uh i was gonna say that yeah i agree with greg it's beast of burden in that like the beast of burden is like it just happened to be dogs it's I've cryptic, heard. weird, yeah, occultist stuff. This is like, it has to be dogs. You know, this is like uh-huh. a dog story. This is all dogs go to heaven if they if it was made for like 25-year-olds. Think about it. You're riding My Little Pony, and you're like, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to take a risk on a five-issue series that's basically a 90s dog movie mixed with a serial killer. I like this guy. Just, just say <laughs> Just say Air Bud. You keep saying 90s dogs movie. You're skirting around it. There's so many of them. We named them Oliver and Company, Homeward Bound, All Dogs Go to Heaven, the 101 Dalmatians, Aristocats. Man, the 90s were obsessed with dogs doing human things. Beethoven. Yeah. Oh, uh, Sandlot. He rolled over just like a human. He did. Oh, my God. I roll over every day. And to see a dog do it on the big screen blew my fucking mind. Beethoven, like one, two, and three. Babe, I think, had a dog in it. Yeah. It herded the sheep. Yeah, you don't you don't see dogs like that now in the, in the 2020s. They well, case in point, in John Wick, it died. Correct. We have a strange relationship with dogs now in in Hollywood, and I'm not here for it. I can't think of any dog movies that are cartoons right now. They don't exist. Straight up dogs. Dogs are the shit in the 90s. Yep, dogs and gorillas. They had their heyday in the 90s. Yeah. Did this book at all? When you picked it up in your comic shop. Did you say to yourself, this is going to have some strange furry tonality? Yes. Hmm. So did I. It definitely felt like that. And it did... Especially because he writes for My Little Pony. Right. I thought that this was going to be a very brony, tee-hee, sweetness, cute, cute. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. Yeah. Right? Am I on... No, I, I was enamored. I was page? enamored by your uh, furry impression. No, it was good. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that was captivating. Yeah. Uh, no, furry it... pe- furries are very, like... Kawaii, yes, in how they act. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just expected this book to be full tilt. That. Yeah. I was almost disappointed it wasn't, just because I thought it was going to be fully bonkers. But it, it probably served the story better that it was not. This book is actually one of the most straightforward comic books we've ever read. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From beginning, like clear middle, beginning and end. <laughs> right. I think we do need to discuss the sexual energy between all of the dogs and the will they, won't they. Okay. I I didn't get that at all. (laughs) You think there's going to be a dog orgy? You're telling me eight to nine dogs left the row, left the row alone in a room. But the way you said it was like, oh, the sexual energy. Nothing in that book read between the goddamn lines. (laughs) <laughs> lead you to believe that that's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> You'll see. This is a five-issue thing. In issue three, there's going to be some crazy eyed wise shut stuff going on. <laughs> One final thing I want to say. 
I I like that it's a limited series. I think five issues is a good length run for this because I I don't see it being a a, a regular ongoing series. I feel like it would cause it to be too slow of a burn. I think with five issues, you get the right amount of pacing to really get it amped up to where we want it to. Yeah, I agree. And uh, you can send your pictures of your dogs in the back. I think they should have to be adopted dogs, personally, since it's called stray dogs. But it's in whatever kind of dog you want. Now we have By the Horns by Marcusan Nasso and Jason Moore. This is a book out on Scout. It had the same treatment that Steak or Steaks did, I think, um, in that they had like a VHS cover and the whole cover treatment that Scout gave it. Oh, can we talk about all the weird things that came with this? Yes, we can. Or like the options for purchase on Scout.com. Well, I don't, I don't know even... if that's their domain, but... I don't even know about that. You could buy a a unicorn horn to drink out of. Yes. Wow, Scout's really going for it. There's also a vinyl. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. That you could buy like a color vinyl. It's who's, yellow. Who's the musician? I don't I, know. I I'll, let you guys, I'll let you guys listen to it because I bought it. Are you kidding me? No, nah, I bought it. it okay, was, I love it that. It was $20 with a special variant. Oh, cover. no. It was $20? Uh-huh. That's wow. worth it. Don't diss him for $20. It's a good vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> Even bad vinyls were $20. <laughs> it's a single. I have something so unique. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't wait to listen to it. The fact that a comic book has a vinyl yeah. or has a unicorn horn you can drink out of, that's enough to me to be like, you have invested enough time in this where I will give it a shot. Yeah. Hell yeah. This is, uh, yeah, I bet it's metal because the author is in really into metal. He has a whole metal podcast where he talks about, in the metal bands, I went through all of them. I didn't, I, I'm a, I'm, I like metal a lot. Mm-hmm. I was not familiar with most of the metal he was talking about. It's a next level. This dude's into metal. So uh, you're going to check out his podcast? It was not bad. Yeah, I'll listen to it. And the artwork's good. You know, seems nice. Anyway, he wrote a comic book called By the Horns that apparently has lots of merch, um, lots of like hype and setup. And the By the Horns comic book is essentially a obsessed... Uh, female unicorn hunter. Um, so I'm, I my new one of my New Year's resolutions was to be nicer to Scout, and this book <laughs> blew me the fuck away. To Whoa, be are you honest. serious? Yeah, you, you liked it that much? I, wow, I I, re- I really like this book. This is a top five Scout book I've ever read for, for sure. sure. Yeah, for fucking sure. This I I one hundred I one hundred percent am gonna pick up the next issue. I like I I really liked it a lot. It was crazy. I was I, I was kind of lukewarm on just the name of the book and like the cover, but once you get into this book, holy shit! To get this kind of young, newer reader and artist in here is just like kind of amazing that they, you know, slam dunked it so well. There are so many elements of this comic that made me think this was a veteran comic book writer. Like it, it, it did some really interesting things. I can name three or two and a half off the top of my head really quickly. One, the way that they like introduce that it's like, oh, there's actually technology. This is like kind of like future esque into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, really kind of like blew my mind, right? How did that happen? Um, in the second panel, you see that she's so she's killed all these monster heads and it's floating in a hovercraft next to her. Yeah. Yeah. But all of the imagery and covers and everything were like axes, swords, things like that. And then it's like, oh, she also has like a blaster. Yeah, I noticed she had a blaster. It's so weird because the township that she's in Mm -hmm. is very much like a a guy like shoveling shit off the street would not be out of place. Right. But there was a robot in the town, too, that had like a pitchfork and shovel. Yes. So, yeah, you're right. So it's like kind of like a high fantasy D&D tale. It's kind of like Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. People would go from wearing rags (laughs) to to riches. (laughs) <laughs> to wearing riches, to wearing very futuristic looking outfits when they were on official business or something. Yes. Like her hunting gear, she looks very cyberpunk. Yes, right. I would yeah, say. Yeah. And I can confirm the people in the town are wearing rags. 
farmer stuff from was the 1700s. Gear. One of the things was I love at the end, they like describe how much effort went into just designing her. Mm-hmm. And at one mm-hmm. point in time, it was like a Conan-esque character, and then they made it female, and they spent a lot of time on her costume, or sorry, her getup. Uh, you know, that's the preferred nomenclature. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm, I'm so glad you caught yourself. Sweet costume. Um, I, I thought her look was awesome. Like, she looked really cool. The The other thing that I thought felt veteran comic booky mm-hmm. was the text that they write in the very beginning. You could think was the main character saying it. And then you read the last panel and you realize, oh... That was the unicorn. That was the unicorn. That, the was, the, yeah. that was the unicorn. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like such a good like tie-in back to it all, and um, and of course, which I love, which you could kind of like guess, the unicorns are not just straight bad guys. Like they have their own side of the story is what we're gonna find. Yeah, they're out. probably like elves. They're just like they're not bad guys, but yeah. they are very much misunderstood. Is it known in that in a fantasy realm that unicorns are shitheads? No, I would not say that's universal at all. Is I think it supposed to be? I think that's what's odd about this. It, I agree. I was like, the whole book, I was like, I think I'm on the unicorn side, right? What have they ever done to deserve <laughs> no, to be hunted? I, I, I think that like they're neut- they could be neutral. And so in this world, they're like, we're going to paint them as bad. Yeah. I don't think they're like working with any like prior mm-hmm. thought or knowledge of. Mm-hmm. So do you know what this guy's other comic book is? No. Um, I don't remember the name of it. But it's a it's a time traveling, uh, yeah. It's called Verocious. It's a Verocious. time, uh, yeah, a time traveling traveling chef that goes and hunts dinosaurs and brings dinosaurs back as meals for people as a chef. So this dude's really into like hunting mythological logical creatures. Okay, first of all, dinosaurs not mythological. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, well. Okay. Well, depends on what chapter of the Bible. Yeah, I don't know in. if you could prove them. So let's let's just take a pause you know, there. Just their bones yeah. and <laughs> pull your zing back, please. Um, <laughs> to put another arrow on, will do. Um, but yeah, like has a brand and and this like I don't know the the front cover of this book led me to believe like cool, fun like cyberpunky looking like strong female lead, and then inside I was like. I can dig this. I can go on this journey. Like, she's outcasted. She's going to have to figure it out. She's avenging a scorned lover. She has a cool cat dog thing following Sabretooth Tiger. Uh, sidekick was great. Elk yeah. Fox. There, oh, Elk Fox. There you go. Um, can we talk about why she was kicked out of the town for killing too many monsters? Well, she's not... Okay. She's not <laughs> contributing to the societal needs of the town. Sure, there's land to be tilled, but you know what? There would no, there would be no land to till if monsters were just running amok. Here's the thing about monsters in this universe, though. I don't think they pose a real threat. <laughs> They're just hanging out at a bus stop. And... I, I think monsters are like, deer. it's like Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. It's it, and you see that they show you that because of the map, they like show you like where they've been located mm-hmm. and that their names. It's like they're almost like video game esque. As like, yeah, you go get the loot from them. Yeah, and we we get a map, so obviously these people have invested into this universe that they've created. I was embarrassed to like it as much as I did. Why were you embarrassed? Because when we were talking about possibly covering it, Mike said, oh, you want to cover the horny unicorn killer book? And then, and and I was like, okay. I didn't <laughs> yes. think it was like necessarily that horny. And then, well, they're unicorns. And then I realized so one, it's a joke. <laughs> so then I realized you were making a pun, but I also <laughs> didn't know if you were making a pun. And then I was like, oh, is this one of those things where they think that I'm like too into sex again? <laughs> <laughs> An and ongoing it, problem with you in this podcast. And it so was horny, the whole sex time. addict. <laughs> Budget King. <laughs> and it was a cyberpunk girl, so I was like, oh, God, they know. <laughs> the sample pages I saw looked a little lusty. As the book goes on, it's not so much so. The first couple pages, when she gets into town, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, like, okay, we might be getting into... <laughs> dynam- oh, there's words here. <laughs> like, dynamite territory with this book, but it, mm-hmm. it, it turned a hard right. Yeah. Oh. Also, too, one of the crazy things was, like, 
when they didn't put words. I thought that that was a mistake. I was like, did my copy not get printed? <laughs> because it was several pages in a row, right? I did it. Where I, it looked I did, like dialogue should be there. I did a double take too. They just knew. They It was like unspoken. Uh, they didn't have to talk to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, the printer was broken. <laughs> That's so funny you said that too. Because I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. What? Um, I guess the methodology there is like, here's a quick hit, like B-roll. Of what has happened over the past, like, eight hours in the village. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. kind of how yeah. the scene lays itself out. Yeah. It also was brilliant because it's like, we essentially knew what went down. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. we didn't, you didn't need to fill it with, like, filler dialogue. Well, plus, it made the reveal of the conversation where she's kicked out of the town mm-hmm. hit a lot harder. Because if we saw a group of the town people who were in charge... Yeah. Be like, she's got to get out of here. Yeah. It would have been too long of build up. And, you know, you're absolutely right. Yeah. We don't need six pages of this committee meeting. Do we, don't we kick her out? Yeah. Cause I don't give a shit about those characters. Mm-hmm. I care about the woman and her wolf, uh, fox, elk sidekick. Yeah. So you're absolutely right with that. I just, I got a really heavy, just cool D and D vibe from this book. Just the worlds it was set up in. When she got to like the the coastal port city, she did the first thing that you do in a D and D campaign, where you go to a store and look at all the weapons and try to sell the things that you've gotten on your journey. So I'm just super excited for where this book's gonna. It go. definitely has like a lit RPG to it, like it's a questing book. Yes, for sure. It yeah, feels yeah. it feels like reading a video game in a good way. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, which I like. I like that in my fantasy books. I need more of that in my comics. Way to go, by the horns. You did it proud of you. Very. <laughs> <laughs>